In the previous video in this series I have shown you how to use Scraping B and OpenAI to scrape information from Amazon website searching for the products. And we were inserting this information into a Google Sheet with a list of product for every day when you run the scrape. In this video I'll show you how to add a URL for a specific product and how to keep this in sync whenever a price for a specific product changes. Also in our case we'll be using Make, Scraping B and OpenAI but in slightly different configuration. So stay tuned and we'll see that in a second. Hi, this is Greg from Business Automated. If you would like to receive notifications about videos that we release, about different ways how to automate your business processes, please consider subscribing. And in this video, we'll continue working on the workflow where we are getting information from a website using Scraping B and OpenAI API to get information into Google Sheets. In this case, we have added additional parameter called URL. So what we would like to do, we would like to extract also a URL from that specific website. So we're going to do it slightly differently because in this case, we are only getting text from this specific uh, scraping B module. We are only getting text. We're not getting actually the, the links which are part of the HTML. So we are going to approach this slightly differently. We're going to use a second module which scraping B has, which is called make an API call. Um, the name is a little bit misleading because technically we are not making an API call. We are just requesting the full website with the HTML code. So you will see that here, what we add is the URL of the website that we would like to scrape. So let's add this one here. And you will see that once I run this right here in the response, I will basically get the full HTML version of the website and so on. So we cannot add this full HTML version of the website into the chat GPT because we would basically explode the number of tokens which are possible to be used inside of um, OpenAI. So what we need to do is basically convert this into a text that also contains URLs. And to do that, we'll actually use a native module from Make, which is called HTML to text. And it's as simple as that. We basically add the HTML body over here. And what you will see what is happening that once we run that, here in the response, we are getting plain text, but together with links. So you'll see that in the square brackets, we are still getting some some links of it uh, over here. So this way we are getting links, but also a lot of trash. So this is why we're using OpenAI to clean this one up. So you will see that I'm actually reusing the previous scenario, but let me, if you have not seen the previous video, I'll explain how it works. So we are just using the regular OpenAI module. We say, use the chat GPT, the latest version here as a, this actually should be system. So as a system, we'll say that you are an online researcher parsing online content. So this is the selection over here. And then as a user, we will give the first prompt. And as the first prompt, we are basically explaining to, to OpenAI say, please give us the output of the website below, which we have attached here, but we are also asking for specific information. So we want to know the price of the product, their brand name and description, and what we'll add also here and URL of the product. And then we say, make sure you use JSON as a response. And here we give example of the JSON, but this example is missing the URL. So what we will do over here, we will add a URL. And here we need to give it an example. So let's copy example of URL to one of the products, copy link address, go back over here. Again, this trash here is unnecessary. So we need only information up to the question mark. So yeah, this will be the URL of that specific product. We will also later use this URL only to keep certain products in sync. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete everything here. Okay, then we have the user and for the next prompt from the user, I like to separate them into two separate separate groups. So this is a little bit more clear. 
we will add the text that came from from the prompt all right here the next module is actually because we ask for a response in in json so one more note here at the bottom we are saying that the response format object json so this is the response that we want here we will also parse that string because we will get back a text we actually want to change it into an object that make can do something and because i have run this scenario before i know that the output from here from the json parsing will be a product once i would run it i would actually see it in the output of the module uh, but here you know i'm just copying the module this has stayed i know there will be an output called product because this is what we have requested so all right so let's test it and see what will be the output okay so let's see at the final module and you can see here that we're getting the brand we're getting the description and we are getting the url over here since i'm seeing that we are getting like a lot of query parameters we're getting very long urls i'll add this as additional prompt to ignore query parameters from the urls and actually i will also remove this reference here because that should not be this should not be necessary let's see whether this url works as is yeah that seems to be a correct url so let's try to do it one more time and let's look at the reply okay you can see this has worked and we got a much nicer much nicer url okay so then we can use this url to update specific products so what we're going to do first we're going to say search rows so we're going to search first whether this url exists all right and we're going to do following action so if it does not exist we will basically add a new row so you'll see that everything here is the same but we'll add one more element we'll add the url and this will happen only if there is no no row number return so row number does not exist otherwise we'll update existing row so if we can see that there is a row number that exists all right here we're gonna add the row number and then as for the values we're gonna lock this one here and then we're gonna add brand description price and url all right let's run this once and because we have run this one for the first time you can see that we got multiple results together with the url okay so now if we would run it one more time then we would have an update and you can see that actually right now here we got an update for some of the items but we got also some of the new items added here so if they had a different different urls and so on you can see that it might not always be parsing like every single item that it that it receives here that's quite a bit of text so you know like if we would like like to go through every item here we might have to break this text into pieces and the way we're going to divide this text into two pieces it's going to be following so we're going to set a variable and then the first thing that we're going to do we're going to take this text and we want to split it into two parts so we're going to do a substring from this specific text and the substring will start at zero and it will finish at the length of this specific text but divided by by two so we want to split it split it into half and this way we would get the the half of the text over here but what we want to do out of this we actually want to build an array so we're gonna say add and then we're gonna follow the description here so to an empty array we are going to add exactly what we have just constructed so this will be value one that we'll add to the array and then the second item will be similar expression but now will not start at zero we will start basically at the length of that array and the ending we don't need to add for this because it will go from half all the way to the end so let's see what we will get and here we can see this text divided into three different three different parts two different parts so 
this way now we could add basically another iterator and then we would take individually values from that specific iterator as input into our OpenAI. So we'll not take the full text, we will just take the value that comes from the iterator. All right, and we will additionally make additional prompt over here to emphasize that we are interested in returning all of the information. So, all right, let's see how this one works. All right, you can see that actually the first batch got already processed and you can see that some of those items are new, some of them are being added and we are actually gotten more items. So this time we got 16 extracted here. So you can see that some of them were new. So we added a few new items. Some of them were already items that got updated. And now we are processing the second batch. And from the second batch, we actually got um, another 20 items. So you can see that we, we got additional items over here. Right. So you can see that this way, you know, like if the website is quite big, it might not capture all the results. But I think when I was looking at this previously, yeah, I think that was about it. I think we had about 30, 30, 40 results. So if this would be too little, we would have to parse this into smaller chunks just to make sure that it has enough context window to parse it. But pretty much you could follow this uh, pattern to build up uh, your and all customized scenario based on whatever input you want to put here inside of them, inside of JSON, whatever you're looking here for, for the output. So I'll add the link to this specific scenario and the diagram and the blueprint in the description below. And I hope this will be useful for you guys. So let me know how are you guys using this and what do you think of this scenario? Thank you so much and have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye. Thank you.